Hi Deborah, hi friends on Facebook. This is Richard Harvey from England. Uh, we're in the middle of the British summer, so it's cold and windy and wet outside. So unfortunately I can't record this with uh, the backdrop of the lovely trees and woods behind me and you're in my office. Uh, Richard Harvey, I'm a Jewish disciple of Yeshua and Deborah asked me to give a bit of an update on what the situation is for uh, Jewish disciples of Yeshua in the United Kingdom. Well, we're under lockdown and uh, I'm sure that many of you are experiencing the same things that we are, but uh, I really wanted to focus on, on what the, stage, the state is for Jewish disciples at the moment and uh, there's a lot happening. So uh, I'm going to share my screen with you for a couple of items and uh, hopefully if you're interested you can look them up on my Facebook page or I post them on a couple of websites I tell you about. So uh, the first thing I wanted to uh, mention is the uh, Jew in the Pew, which is a new podcast that I've launched and uh, it'll be interviews. It's a bit like unorthodox. Uh, there's quite a few uh, stories. There's uh, interviews with other Jewish disciples of Yeshua and uh, it'll go out on YouTube and as a podcast. Uh, then looking at some other items, uh, earlier this year there was a major report commissioned by the Church of England uh, on Christian anti-Semitism and uh, the report is called God's Unfailing Word, Theological and Practical Perspectives on Christian Jewish Relations. It was commissioned by the man in the middle, Justin Welby, uh, the Chief Rabbi of England, Ephraim Mervis on the left, uh, made a comment, an epilogue to the report, and uh, I was even consulted before the report was written and made some comments afterwards. It's an interesting report because it says that not only in Christian history, but even in the history of the Anglican Church, there's been a whole legacy of anti-Judaism, which has led to anti-Semitism. Uh, the report is interesting because it doesn't say that we shouldn't share the good news of the Messiah with Jewish people, and that's why Chief Rabbi Ephraim Mervis was quite opposed to it. And uh, in the first um, editing of the report, they, they said, we're not even here to discuss the question of Messianic Jews. And I gave them a couple of paragraphs of edits on what they might say, and they quote from Mark Kinzer, some of you will know him, and they quote uh, some of the uh, recent literature on Messianic Jews, Jewish disciples, and the report actually is a typically Anglican mixed bag. It tries to defend the church from accusations of anti-Semitism. It tries to ask for healing, forgiveness, and cleansing when there has been an anti-Jewish legacy within the church. It doesn't welcome Messianic Jews specifically, but it, it doesn't really deny their existence either. And it doesn't compromise on the uniqueness of Yeshua, his messiahship, his deity. So that report came out at the beginning of the year. Uh, also at the beginning of the year, in the uh, what we call the New Year's Honours List, if I can find that. Um, that's my next one. In the New Year's Honours list, um, the, one of the leading uh, Jewish believers in this country, Reverend John Fieldsend, who was a kinder transport survivor who came out of Czechoslovakia uh, just on the eve of the war because Richard uh, Win um, Winton's uh, kinder transports brought many Jewish children out of, the, um, out of Nazi Europe. Uh, here you are, um, John Fieldsend uh, was given the British uh, Empire Medal. So it's a bit like a knighthood or an OBE, uh, the British Empire Medal for services to Holocaust education. Now, John is a good friend of ours. He was a founding member of Beit Yeshua Messianic Congregation in the 1980s. And uh, it's a real testimony to his work that he has been going around speaking to hundreds of thousands of school children about the Holocaust, about the kinder transport. And then when people ask, well, what did you do for a living? He became an Anglican vicar. And like so many 
kinder transport uh, refugees. He became a believer in the Yeshua, in the Messiah, and he is one of many leading Jewish believers in Messiah today, quite well known in the UK. This press release was uh, from the British, Czech and Slovak Review, who reported on his uh, honour uh, there. Then uh, another piece of information that uh, I would uh, want to tell you about is that today, 29th of April 2020, is the anniversary of the birth of a lovely uh, Holocaust refugee, Old Testament theologian and Messianic Jew and apologist called Ludwig De Witt. Some of you may know of him because uh, he wrote quite frequently uh, for the um, uh, evangelistic um, periodical called, um, oh my gosh, my uh, slides are loading slowly, called The Messianic, I must get it right, or Elliot Clayman will tell me off if he's a member, Messianic Literature Outreach. And Ludwig de Witz was born in Berlin. He studied there and then he came to England where he was interned uh, because he was a foreign uh, alien and they didn't know whose side he was on during the war. And then he was an evangelist with the Mild May Mission to the Jewish people in Sheffield and then to Italy. And then he went to America and was the leader of, I think it was called the Hebrew Christian Church then, but it's now Emmanuel Messianic Congregation in Baltimore. And then he was professor of Old Testament in uh, Columbia Theological Seminary, where uh, Walter Brueggemann, the great Old Testament uh, theologian was. So I'm celebrating on my website, which is called On This Day in Messianic Jewish History, his birth, uh, 29th of April, 1916. Now, just a bit of information about the Messianic movement in uh, the UK. We are quite small, but we link together with the British Messianic Jewish Alliance. Uh, this is the new website that's been designed and there's some 12 or 15 or so Messianic fellowships that are associated with the BMJA, the British Messianic Jewish Alliance, four of them in London and the rest all around the country in Leeds, in Manchester, in Liverpool, in uh, south of England as well. So uh, I would estimate there's probably a couple of hundred of Jewish disciples of Yeshua who are regularly associated with these British uh, messianic fellowships. But of course, there's far more Jewish disciples of Yeshua who are in the mainstream churches, in the mainstream Anglican churches, Baptist churches, uh, and especially in the Roman Catholic churches. And the more I travel, the more I meet uh, Hebrew Catholics or, or Jewish uh, background Catholics, however they describe themselves, and uh, I'm hoping that the newly formed Yachad Be Yeshua, this international fellowship of Jewish disciples of Jesus, will really be able to cater for their needs as they are the majority, 95% or so of Jewish disciples of Yeshua, especially in England, are not part of the mainstream messianic groups, but are part of the established churches. So uh, that's really uh, what I think I should share from uh, my experience of Jewish disciples of Yeshua here in England. And my interest is in the developing of the theology of the movement, both in Israel and uh, in America and also in the UK. But I'm really delighted that there are still a growing number of Jewish disciples of Yeshua here. Just a couple of examples of this at Passover, we've been having like you virtual seders online. So I attended two seders. Firstly, the seder run by my cousin, who is the uh, senior rabbi of the largest reform synagogue in the UK. And uh, we are always expected to turn up there. And this year was no exception, except we were all online and uh, we're always welcome there. And then the next day I did a virtual Seder with my daughter and my three grandchildren, where we had a very simple Passover meal celebration. Uh, we had uh, a mock-up of the uh, 
Pharaoh's armies being drowned in the Red Sea. We had uh, our own imitation, kosher wine, because uh, that was all they had there. Um, but the, um, the interesting thing was my daughter, who's a Jewish disciple of Yeshua, posted online some of the photos and some of the, uh, the sound bites from the um, celebration of Passover. And she got an amazing response because she also posted some pictures of Mark Chagall's depiction of Yeshua, of Jesus, on the cross. And some of her friends in the Jewish community she lives in, in North London, were just uh, amazed at the authenticity of the Passover celebration, the, the fun that the kids were having. But even more, they were taking issue with her about her faith in Yeshua as the Messiah. So the next generation, because some of us are getting older, and the generation after that, our grandchildren, are continuing to develop and celebrate the fact that we are Jewish disciples of the greatest Jew who ever lived, Rabbi Yeshua. And uh, I'm so grateful to be part of your Facebook group and uh, I'm looking forward to update, updates from others. And I'd just like you to put in your diary the year 2025. Hopefully the coronavirus will have ended by then and you'll be able to travel to England, to London, to the Memorial Hall in Islington in North London, where in 1925 was the first meeting of what was called the International Hebrew Christian Alliance, now called the International Messianic Jewish Alliance. So I have booked the Assembly Hall in faith for a big celebration in the year 2025, I think it's in September, a massive celebration of a hundred years of the international Hebrew Christian, now Messianic Jewish Alliance. So put it in your calendar and come and join us in England in a few years time. So God bless you and uh, hope all goes well with us all in uh, England, in the USA, in Israel, wherever we may be. And this is Richard Harvey saying shalom and thank you for this opportunity to share with you. Thank you.